Today, I'm gonna unveil some of the physical mechanics behind tracking and teach you what you need to do to incorporate it into your routines. Tracking and the skills that come along with being good at tracking is an important part of climbing the ranks in various FPS games that we play. This is especially true if you're newer to FPS or stuck in ELO hell or find yourself on a fun ranked losing streak. In almost every video out about tracking and aiming mechanics, people discuss how you can use aim trainers and some of the theory about optimizing training to improve your tracking. Don't get me wrong, these can absolutely be helpful and are also important in your progress with tracking, but understanding some of the physical components like what muscles we're using, which joints are involved, efficiency of movement behind tracking can also help you ensure that you can best leverage the tips of other videos. And if you can't control your wrist and hand well, then you might not get the most out of your aim training sessions. So when I say physical components, I mean the biomechanics that are relevant with tracking. And this can involve which types of fibers we use, what muscles we actually use, and even our ability to use our eyes to read what's on the screen. But what is really happening with our bodies when we're tracking? When we're performing tracking games, we have slower and more controlled contractions of the muscles of the elbow, wrist, and shoulder. And we have to maintain constant tension at specific muscles to maintain grip of the mouse. That's an isometric contraction, while also actively contracting the muscles to move the mouse. That's a concentric contraction. And so working on these specific muscles can give us better control, meaning better tracking. But the composition of these muscles impacts how we exercise. Time for science. Muscles are actually composed of different types of fibers. Some are designed to contract for long periods without fatiguing. These are called slow twitch fibers. And think of your postural muscles or muscles involved in endurance-based sports, like running, cycling, swimming, etc. By the way, endurance is really important to prevent injuries with gaming, and if you want to know why, check out this video here. While other fibers are responsible for producing rapid and forceful contractions with higher levels of tension, but fatiguing more quickly, and these are called fast twitch fibers. Think of the big muscles responsible for moving quickly, like your quads, biceps, pecs, and more explosive movements within sports. Then we have intermediate fibers which are in between. They have more tension than slow twitch fibers and are more fatigue resistant than fast twitch fibers. And guess what? There's actually some research that does tell us that certain muscle groups have a preference for certain types of fibers. What I found in these studies is actually very interesting. The findings were really consistent with where we see a lot of pain develop in the gamers that we work with. They found that the muscles on the top of our forearms have more slow twitch versus fast twitch fibers, and those on the palm side have about a 50-50 even distribution. And then in monkey studies, they found that muscles on the thumb side of the forearm had about 50-50, while the pinky side, and this one's interesting, they had a larger distribution towards fast twitch fibers. We also have to remember that everyone does have genetic differences too. Since the flexors have less slow twitch fibers, which means less endurance or fatigue resistance, they have a higher likelihood of getting irritated. The pinky side is the most important though since it's such a common area of pain and we don't have enough endurance based on our physiology, which means we really need to build up the endurance of these muscles. And so knowing this, we can actually be more intentional about training these muscle groups, giving us way better control of our wrists and hands and of course our aim and tracking. So if you've ever felt as though you've had trouble controlling your wrist and hand to perform certain mouse movements, then listen up. Specific exercises will help you improve your tracking more quickly. So which muscles should we target? What muscles do we actually use when we're tracking? I wish I could say that only a specific set of muscle groups are utilized, but it actually differs quite significantly depending on your specific grip, sensitivity, game title, friction of the mouse pad, and so many other variables. I've actually reviewed some of the most unique grips and highlight some specifics of what you can do in this video here. Despite this, I will highlight some of the most common muscle groups used based on what joint is dominant in control. And we'll start with the wrist. If your wrist is responsible for tracking, then in many cases, it involves muscles at the pinky and thumb side of our forearm. We call them our radial and ulnar deviators. These are the muscles you should be strengthening and focusing on to build endurance more than strength. And after building some endurance, including some dynamic exercises, can also help with your overall coordination. 
Here are a few exercises you can do to improve this. This is called dumbbell ulnar deviation, and it's responsible for targeting the muscles that allow you to track and flick your mouse over to the right. You want to make sure you're gripping the dumbbell at the front end as shown so you can really maximize tension on the ulnar deviators. You're going to be performing three sets of 12 to 15, again to build up the tissue capacity to handle repeated tracking movements. This one's called a dumbbell radial deviation and targets the thumb side of the forearm. Again, you want to do three sets of 12 and hold it at the bottom end of the dumbbell as shown. These are more dynamic exercises you can do after you build up this basic endurance with a weighted ball. So you can do a radial deviation toss as well as an ulnar deviation slam to really provide high tension loading to these tendons. Again, allowing you to develop better overall control while tracking. You're going to be doing three sets of eight because it's such a high load and dynamic exercise. Okay, what about your arm and shoulder movers? In most cases, it will involve the following muscles. For the shoulder, it's the internal and external rotators, and for the elbow, it's the elbow flexors and extensors. Generally, if you are performing an exercise program, you can target these muscles with your standard curls and presses. But for the shoulder, doing some rotator cuff exercises can be pretty helpful and in general, can help you feel as though you have better control of your entire upper limb. Now I'm gonna talk about something that no one on YouTube has ever mentioned about tracking. When we're tracking, we're actually utilizing our eyes to understand or take information from the environment to make a better decision about where we place our mouse as we're following a target. And creators like Struth and Matty OW have actually already created a lot of great content about this concept of reading. So I won't go into too much depth about what this is, but what is the actual underlying physiology of reading targets? Outside of understanding some of the game concepts, our eyes have different regions of focus and vision. And when we center our focus, it's typically quite a small area. Yet there's peripheral and vision involved around this focal point. We can expand the comprehension of what we're seeing within the peripheral vision through training. This is actually how speed readers are able to read more quickly. They jump at various points on a page since they can read more than just a single word. So instead of us just being able to read the pixel of the head, we can see the head plus the environment, which can give us cues as to where the player might be going, and then we can make better predictive aim as a result of that. So how do we train this? There's actually a few videos that include some of these training exercises for the eyes, but don't specifically focus on this skill. You can instead focus on an exercise like this, focusing on the center target, then using your peripheral vision to identify each number one step at a time. You can then reverse this and repeat performing this for a total of 10 overall repetitions. Then you can expand the size of the circle to increase your peripheral comprehension. To add variations, you can use different shapes. And to do this at home, just use post-it notes. But another thing you can do is just watch a lot of VODs and intentionally try to understand the pathing that a certain individual is going to be making based on the environment of where they're going. Then you can really train your vision into recognizing the environmental and movement cues so you can make a better decision about your tracking movement. So if you incorporate both physical and eye exercises, you'll probably notice some changes with your tracking. And please comment below with what you notice after doing these exercises. It does take time for our bodies to adapt, so give it a few weeks. And let me know if you come up with any unique peripheral training exercises or tools. But remember, it's only one part of improving your tracking. And if you want to perform some of these routines that target a lot of these muscles, where you can just load it up, follow along, check out our playlist right here.